you hear me? Excellent. Listen, first of all, I just want to say thank you so much for coming. I salute you since uh, you are people who have uh, chosen at this time, which is an amazing time, I think, to wake up to the fact of what is going on, except uh, or instead of just buying into the official story that we've been fed for decades and decades and decades. So we've had a tiny amount of technical problems, but I think we're getting there. Okay. Can I not move? Sorry? Okay, I will stay here most of the time, because I, I need to move around. Anyway, like uh, Lucas said, I spent 30 years of my life uh, really trying to expose what is going on, not because I'm paid by anyone or have a job to do that or something like that. I'm just an ordinary guy who just have a major problem when there are bullies around, when innocent people are being hurt, when people are being killed that stand for many of the very, very beautiful things that I believe in, which is peace, your unity, uh, love, compassion, forgiveness. These are the things that I believe in and that I believe are the things that will move this world forward. And the people that I have been exposing with a great deal of risk, I must say I paid a very high price. I have two friends who was murdered. I had to leave my home country. Uh, I left Sweden where I grew up and had to move to Spain because I was threatened and so on. So I'm not saying these things lightly. I put my life on the line. I do that on a regular basis. I'm happy to do that. Uh, at the same time, what I present are things that uh, I really have looked into very, very deeply. And let's see if it works. It changed, my God. Unreal. How it all began for moi. It began with, I was born not far from here, and uh, I come from a family that was very much involved in the resistance movement against the German occupation here. My dad was, uh, let's see if we can see him, whoops. <laughs> my, <laughs> I, I have to have a serious talk with my mother, I think. <laughs> this is my dad there. Maybe I should grow a moustache or something. <laughs> anyway, my dad was in the, in the resistance movement, and my, my granddad was in jail for helping smuggling Jews to Sweden, or at least that was uh, what he was put in Vesla Fengstel for, for a couple of months. My great-grandmother, uh, actually, she started uh, what is called Kirgen's course here. Uh, I'm just saying that because she was this tiny, but she was one of the three founding members of this church that today have about 7,000 people working for it or something like that. And their focus was to help people that nobody else cared about. And somehow I feel that that is the legacy I carry on, you know, because the people we're talking about do not care about us at all. We are just useless eaters, as they poetically call us, and uh, that's not okay with me. In my family, uh, uh, like I grew up, and in my family, it's somehow we, we grew up with all these stories about the Danish resistance movement, like my grandmother's sisters used to smuggle weapons in a baby cot, you know, and these type of things. My dad had machine guns at home, don't know why. Uh, and he used to have uh, friends over the year from the resistance movement coming up and visiting him. So, so we grew up with all these stories about the importance of even though you are missed an absolute no one, if there is such a thing, but even if you're in the minority of one, you still have to do your part. And even if it's shit scary, you still have to do it. And uh, I used to have major frights and scares when it came to speaking in public. There you go, here I am. Anyway, so it's, it's in my family as well. My brother, Shanti Ritam, my sister, Hele, who is here, and her husband, uh, Lance, down here. So uh, we are united as a family when it comes to trying to expose what is going on, because there is a lot going on. 
the people I'm going to uh, talk about today are the small group. They, they call themselves the global elite. I call them the minority uh, or the lightless because they're only a few thousand and we are seven billion people. So it's an absolute joke and disgrace for the rest of us that we're here. We should have been laughing having a beer somewhere else instead of spending time here. It's an absolute joke and I think all of us have to look in the mirror and say, come on, what is going on? And how sleep can you be? How sleep asleep are so many of us and have been for decades and decades and decades buying into the things I'm going to present today. False flag operations, terror by template, the things that they have been carried out for such a long time. And we have been buying it for years and years and years. And the reason why it's not okay is because innocent people are being hurt on a daily basis in these wars that have been on absolute lies, total greed from a small, small, small group of people. They're being killed, raped, plundered on a daily basis. They still do it. I'm here as a citizen of a country who is at war based on these lies, where your sons and daughters are part of killing and plundering countries that are based on absolute lies. These wars are unjust. Anyway, no, I'm just saying facts. <laughs> so back to my dad. <laughs> Can, I don't know how, I don't feel with that I like. Anyway, so the question is, we say that, my God, this elite, they're so powerful and we are so powerless. I'll say, so just an example, we got this guy who came to a point of what is called power. Now, was it because of his incredible hairdo or the stylist moustache? What happened? How did he get to where he came? And how did he come to a point where he made so much mayhem in the world? So was this a powerful individual? I would say, put this guy next to him in the same room. Who's got the power? What do you think? This guy with a mustache, he was about like this, and not very physical. He had a loud voice, but otherwise than that, that was it. So we go back to real power. So did he have it in the genes? Did he have it? Where did he come from? What? Is he a powerful person? Was he a powerful person? And what made millions follow him? We put him up against another enemy. <laughs> this beautiful lady could sit on him so he would not be able to move and that would have avoided a second world war. <laughs> I am not kidding. If she sat on him, he would stay put. <laughs> so who is powerful? What is power? Okay, bye-bye. This guy, this was before it all happened. We got Adolf Schickelgruber. Hitler was his mother's name, so his real name was Schickelgruber. So it should actually have been Heil Schickelgruber, but that didn't really fit in. But here he is, one in anywhere. I mean, what made the difference with it, this one? What was the thing that made him change the history of the world for the worse? What made him become that in only a few years, with millions behind him? And please study history, see the parallels, see what is going on in our beautiful countries nowadays, where more and more of the who is coming in through the back door, you know? Scary times if you don't wake up, I tell you, because the people or this small, small minority I'm talking about, they move forward they are very determined and they will not back down. So, once again, how did he get there? One of the things they use is deception. Another one is financing. Okay. And now I'm going to demonstrate one of their major tools, if you wouldn't mind, Maestro. This should be dark. It's not 
But what I'm saying is, it is in the dark that they pull it off. They have done it for so many years because we have not been able to see what is going on. It is in the dark and it's behind the scenes. And what I'm going to focus on today and what I've spent a lot of my life doing is trying to expose the templates that they're using. Because, can I have some light again, please? This is what I'm trying to do, put light on conspiracies. My website's, by the way, lightonconspiracies.com, hand-picked name. Because it's by exposing them, totally non-violent, totally no violence, no hatred, no revenge, just put, put the spotlight right on them, fearlessly saying, we see you, we see what you're up to, and it's enough. We are tired. It is time for you to quit. Uh, okay. It is like when you watch a magician, you know, the first time he does something like, whoa, it's magic. And then the second time, whoa, it's magic again, it's amazing. Until you suddenly see that he's doing something behind the, the back with his right hand. So you start, instead of watching, whoa, you look at that one. Once you see that that's where it goes on, you won't buy it anymore. As soon as you do like that, he's like, oh, I know what you're doing. I mean, give it up. This is what they're doing. They're using these methods that was produced, that was actually created by the old Romans, and they use it to this very day. They've just made a digital high-tech version of it, and we're buying it until we see what's going on. Once we see the methods, the methods to the madness, once we see how they do it, boom, as soon as they even get close to it, we can say, I'm not buying that. I mean, come on. It's like when you see Rocky, you saw Rocky 1, you saw Rocky 2, Rocky 3. When it comes to like Rocky 18, you're kind of bored, you know? It's kind of difficult for them to come up with a new bad guy, a new scheme, a new where Rocky comes out like the winner yay, in Pennsylvania, wherever he was. Uh, so the thing is to expose the methods because instead of totally focused on the details on every single conspiracy because they're speeding it up now because they're getting threatened because more and more of us are waking up beautiful times so they're speeding it up so the more we can become aware of the details how they set them up how they pull it off how they totally dupe us the sooner we can stop it here this nice gentleman who when it comes to war criminals, would be on a scale higher than Adolf Hitler. He should put a moustache on, maybe he could, they could, you know, but otherwise than that. This guy, who was, a, who was uh, what do you say, uh, nominated and received the Nobel Peace Prize. I mean, God, shoot me in the head with something. How, it's like, how is it possible? It just shows the level of incredible arrogance and total no respect for us. The reason why? Because we do not deserve the respect, because we have been so asleep. It's painful to wake up, but it is high time. People are dying on a daily basis. We're going to hear about Max Egan, uh, is going to tell us about Gaza later this evening. This is part of the whole thing. They're killing, blowing children up, women, all of it. And we're just sitting here, picking our nose, ordering another slice of pizza, changing channels. Well, I'm sorry it's not here, so who cares, really? I'm, I really feel sorry about them, but what can I do? What's on the other channel? Oh, it's going to be sunny tomorrow, darling. You know, that type of thing. This is not okay. And it's just a matter of time. These people I'm talking about is aiming globally so it's just a matter of time before they're here if we do not expose them. So I say gently, wakey, wakey time, folks. Today, this was in, at the Bilderberg meeting. Dear old Henry was there in 1992. He said, today Americans would be outraged if the United Nations troops entered Los, Los Angeles to, ro to restore order. Tomorrow they will be grateful. What would make the difference? 
This is especially true if they were told there was an outside threat from beyond, outside threat from beyond, whether real or promulgated, I don't know that name, but it means publicly spread, that threatens our very existence. We're talking about the boogeyman. Create a boogeyman and you will get away with murder, literally. It is then that all peoples of the world will plead with world leaders to deliver them from this evil, the evil boogeyman. The, the one thing every man fears is the unknown. When presented with this scenario, individual rights will be willingly relinquished, given up, for the guarantee of their well-being granted to them by their world government. World government. And by the world, by the... <laughs> By, by the world, by the way, government means mind control. Governmente, it is an exact word of mind control. That are the people you are electing. These are the people you are voting for. Who that would control your mind? I would say there, there are other options, you know. So, we go to what are these methods that I'm talking about? One of the things that they have been using since 2,000 years or more, developed by the Romans, was what is called false flag operations. These operations are called false flag operations because from old naval history, it was a, um, a way of you took your own ships and pulled the enemy's flag, then attacked your own ships, blamed it on the enemy and said, my God, how dare you? And then we attack you because you were the bad guys attacking us and we will just invade your country. Often these, the ones that started the whole thing were a small, small country and the ones that were attacked was a massive big naval fleet. So you couldn't wonder how dare a little tiny country like that with loads of minerals or oils or whatever attack big brother but they did, so we just have to squash them. False flag operation. It is a deception. Okay, so... Template, template means like a, a pattern, like a bullet point list. Yeah, I, I'm... Sorry? Yeah, exactly. And the reason why I, I talk about templates is not that I found templates on a paper. I've, dis I've looked into so many of these different assassinations and, and false flag operations, and I've just seen, my God, they did it there, and then there, and then there, and there. That, that was step one. Then they did that, and that, and that, and that, the same, and the same, and the same. So in the end, I sort of, over all of these years, I got to like a bullet point list that I'm going to present to you how they pull it off. So. So there's false flag, and one of the things that they, they uh, do with these false flag operations, they do it, one thing, to push forward their very violent agenda, that without these outer attacks, the population would never accept their agenda. So there's false flag oper operations like that, but also they sometimes use this as diversion to... <laughs> So, okay, 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 now the whole idea, I could have used real bombs in here, the, the sound engineer here was very kind to offer me theater bombs, it would have blown you away, I mean, volume-wise, instead we used balloons. What I'm saying is that this is the way to do it, because how many of you, had this been really a violent blast, how many of you would have seen how I got up here? You would just, I was there, boom, 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 you look away, I move here, you look back, you don't really notice anything. Am I wearing the same shirt? Did I change trousers? Did I? Who, who knows? But this is the... <laughs> Well, she knows, but this is the thing they pull it off. This is how they pull it off. So the next time, for instance, you got dear Bill Clinton or somebody like that in a power position, somebody, you now suddenly he's accused of that this Monica Lewinsky was giving him a BJ. Oh my God, the whole world media looked left for months. 
did she or did she not? Did she or did she not? At the same time, you have major things happening in the world, major, major scandals that they <laughs> media, look over there, <laughs> go, 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 go. Yeah, oh, she did do it. It was Clinton, but we still love him even though he lied. And then it's, everything is okay, and you have not noticed, boom, 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 Iran contrast, weapons, money, all of that moving, 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 and then back to normal. Oh, dear old Bill Clinton. I mean, he's such a good-looking guy. He even looks like Kennedy. I wonder why they picked him. <laughs> By the way, do you know that I'm back now here? The dear old Bill Clinton, he was uh, a low-level governor of Arkansas, which is uh, like our incredible American friends who's come all the way from Pennsylvania to be here to educate themselves. I applaud you. In, in Arkansas, we had Bill and Hillary Clinton. I hope you don't mind me going a bit like this. I would tie it all in together, but I'm just going to point out things. Dear old Bill and Hillary, they were, uh, he was the governor of Arkansas, and Hillary, his young wife, were very nice people involved in very illegal estate agency. It's called the, White, uh, the Whitewater Scandal. Lots of very, very strange things going on. At the same time, there's this tiny little town called Mina in Arkansas. Okay, this tiny little town has an airstrip, and it's way off the map. Nobody, the town is so small, and the, the airstrip is so out of the way anyway. So, what was it used for, and how on earth did Bill Clinton become president? He and his partner, Dan Lasseter, was together with George Bush Sr., who is soon going to see is going to be very central in a lot of these things, were actually receiving the drugs in the so-called Iran-Contra scandal. It was this big, big scandal where weapons were stolen from the National Guard, under the supervision of Colin Powell. They, they stole the weapons, they got rid of the serial numbers, they had a CIA opera, uh, operation going on that was only manufacturing these tiny parts, but without serial numbers. Okay, so the weapons, without serial numbers, therefore not registered, out of the factories, got the piece in, and then on the way they were flown out with Medi, Medivac planes, big, big cargo planes, down to countries like Honduras, El Salvador, Nicaragua, and so on, funding the so-called Contra army that was totally a CIA creation that was put down there to s kill and slaughter the population of these countries. At the same time, when the planes returned to the States, they were filled up with crack and cocaine, or, or it was cocaine that was later turned into crack. So, were planes out, with weapons, funding or getting this whole thing going down there, and then all the drugs coming in. And people, the people that were actually receiving the drugs on location personally was Bill Clinton, Dan Lasseter, they have been filmed, George Bush Sr. personally. I'm not talking about them being somewhere in the background. They were there when the planes landed, and then the crack cocaine, or this cocaine, was spread out through the different pipelines they had to the cribs in LA, up to the mob in Chicago, to Florida, and so on, starting the whole crack epidemic that is going on to destabilize the American society. This is one of the methods they do. They destabilize. They get the crime rates up, they get the drugs up, they push in weapons, they heavily invest in the private prisons and so on, so the more people they can stuff in there and get the taxpayers paying for, the better it is. It's always the taxpayers that are paying, by the way. We go back to false flag temples. Okay, templates. False flag, a horrific staged, staged event blame on a political enemy and use as the pretext to start a war or enact draconia, draconia laws in the name of national security. In the, just after the Second World War, they started the NSC and other people, uh, they started regrouping the world. And what they did was that one of the things they wanted was to start the strategy of tension 
the OSS turned into the CIA. And one of the things uh, they found out after uh, starting Operation Gladio, I'm sorry, this, this is not for rookies. This is a bit over course. If you do not understand, please let me know afterwards. I'll be most happy to talk to you. But Gladio was a ghost army that was created in all the different NATO countries to uh, be like a, a shadow um, army already in place should the, whatever NATO country be invaded from the east, then the, the whole resistance movement would already be in place. Small groups, small cells of eight to ten people with weapon depots, fuel depots, food, all of this on the, on the ground, so that if the country would be invaded, boom, the royalties, the government to England, to London, and from there they could then uh, organize the whole resistance movement. Great idea. Good idea. This was in the 47 it was created. But then the threat from the East just disappeared. And after a while, they had this massive army in all the NATO countries, mostly built up by people with these type of mentality, very violent, disciplined people. So they thought, my God, what should we do with them? You know, it's a bit of a pity that they're just going around being doing nothing. So why don't we just create mayhem. That's an excellent idea. Why didn't we think about that before? Because the more fear we can inflict on society, the more we, the normal people, will say, oh my God, I need protection. And then we will turn towards the ones that we have absolutely no idea with the ones who created the terror and ask, please, please come with a solution. And then we will then push forward. They call that the strategy of tension. It was created in the late, uh, late 50, uh, 1940s, beginning of the 1950s. That was when they really started pushing it. And after that, you will see that so many of these so-called terror acts or terror attacks and so on, they're inside jobs. I mean, I don't know how many I've looked into. In the end, they look very separate. In the end, oh my God, the same people again, the same people again, the same people again, the same people. I, I get tired of hearing myself repeating it. So, some false flag examples. The Reichstag fire, how the Second World War was started, or how Pit uh, Hitler came to power. They set it on fire themselves and then blamed and said, oh my God, we need to get the whole thing going. Operation Himmler, that was Hitler's Polish invasion. You know, they got people dressed in Polish uh, uniforms, or I think they were, they were prisoners, put them in Polish uniforms, made them attack Germany, shot the guys, put, left them at the border and said, my God, we have been attacked. We need to start the war on the rest of the world. Boom, and there they went, and there we bought them bought it. Very important to see the structure behind such a person as Hitler, the financial structure behind such a person as Hitler, because we are looking upon financial structures that finance both sides of conflicts. It's not that they do this, they thrive on death and destruction. That is their game. The more the merrier. The more people they can kill, the more people, the more bombs they can sell, the more weapons they can sell, the more things they can blow up so that they can then replace them. The more uh, villages, the more towns they blow up, then that they can then rebuild all the time on taxpayers' money or attack uh, innocent countries, then approach them by the World Bank and in the International Monetary Fund, which are their tools, and say, my God, you're being under attack. We will lend you money now so you can buy weapons and defend yourself. Stand up, man. Okay, so they borrow money and then they get slaughtered anyway. And not only that, then they have debts that they will never get out. This group invade country by country, different ways. Some people, some countries by military force, other people they destroy financially. Or they go in and they have like financial hitmen that just goes up to the president and say, Dear Mr. President, would you mind having a cup of tea with me? The president sits down. He's a very honest, decent man. And they said, you know, in this pocket, I have money, amounts that you can't even dream of. And in this pocket, I have a bullet with your name on. What would you choose? And that's how it goes. If they choose and the bullet and say, go on, sort off, 
Hugo Chavez, many of the, of the strong people in Latin America, they're dead within a month. Dead within a month. Or they take the money and they're totally corrupt, totally in the pocket of these people. Other countries are invaded financially, or they say through the European Union, I'm, I'm, go I'm just going to say things that, uh, very quickly, but these are creations by the same elite group. You will see the founders of these things, like the UN, United Nations, the UNICEF, the United Nations Army Force, the NATO, the World Bank, the International Monetary Fund, created by the same group of people. We're talking Rockefellers, Rothschilds, JP Morgan, these type of, of financial structures that are behind the conflicts as well. Very important to find who are these people and how are they doing it. And then you will also see how, for instance, we say, oh, these countries in Africa, my God, they can never be, there, there can never be peace there because they're always fighting, you know. I mean, it must be because they've got more pigment in their skin than us because we would never fight like that. I mean, there is a reason that they're starving, but, be, but beyond that, I mean, why do they, why are they not, you know, like friends and like this? These starvations and famines Check out the history. How did they start? Somalia, for instance, what they, were, they went in and the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund, awful, awful organizations, awful. They went in, and this is what, just one example, you will see Greece, Italy, many, many, many countries. They go in and they say to this country, you know, we got these loans. You know, we, get, we have these incredible opportunities. Now you, if you were the, you've got sun all the time, you've got all the perfect, perfect circumstances to grow cotton. Do that. That's excellent. Everybody should do that. What happens is then, because it's so lucrative, the whole population said, my God, let's grow cotton. So the whole country gives up all the things that makes the national sovereignty, the power of that structure that has been built for thousands of years. And then they say, cotton is the way to go. My God, we're going to make a fortune. We can go and travel and, you know, enjoy ourselves, you know, ha have a wonderful time. So everybody starts uh, having cotton fields, cotton fields, cotton fields, cotton fields. You went through Somalia. Cotton fields, cotton fields, cotton fields, cotton fields, cotton fields. And once that was done, after a few years down the road, the World Bank said, I'm really sorry, I don't know what happened, but uh, sorry, we're going to buy it from, from uh, Gambia instead, you know? So suddenly, Somalia, that was a powerful, powerful nation before, just went into total chaos because they couldn't sell the cotton and all the other... Uh, crops and so on that fed the population people, suddenly it wasn't there. It was just cotton. You can't eat cotton. So the whole country just went boom. Within two years, it was down the drain. No money, no nothing. And no wonder that people start getting frustrated. When you are hungry, not a fun place to be. That is when blo blow sugar goes low, you get irritated, these things. So very easy to fuel a conflict. So they go in, they start pumping in money, weapons, all of these things, and here we have a war that we can keep on going forever and ever. No, it's a, it's a civil war, it's been going on for 15 years. Yeah, but how did it start and why is it still there? Look at these different wars globally, you will see the same thing popping up again and again and again and again and again. Same story. And we are thinking, my God, these people, you know, with dark skin, why can they not be friends? Look at us, we're civilized. No, I'm sorry, we're not. We are the ones that are funding, are uh, supporting the structure behind this slavery. Not okay. It is not okay. It is time to stop it by exposing it. We got... <laughs> Listen... Absolutely no th need for clapping. I'm just saying the way it is. Okay, thank you. Anyway, you can see here there's a lot of these. The Gulf of Tonkin incident. Do you know that one? That was the one that started the whole Vietnam War. What happened? There was a radio call. We're being attacked. We're being attacked. Oh my God, we need to start this whole war on Vietnam. 
And then it turned out, no, there wasn't even an attack. I'm sorry, it was a mis misunderstanding. And that started the whole Vietnam War that cost, they normally say 54,000 American lives. I would say, yeah, and like more than a million Vietnamese lives that had absolutely nothing to do with this conflict that was totally based on drugs. Drugs, weapon, these type of things, because Vietnam is close to the Golden Triangle. It was started by the French, then the French was sort of on their way out, the states took over, and suddenly saw, oh my God, we can make an absolute fortune here. At the same time, blast this whole place up, because every single bomb that is dropped there, out of self-defense, every single bomb, that's another $3,000 or 40000 each Bell helicopter that is shot down, oh, what a tragedy. Not really, if you're the producer of Bell helicopters. Oh, but the F-16 fighters, they, they're shot down as well. My God, such a horrible thing. Not really, if you're the producer of the F-16s. At the same time, you make billions, billions. You can test out new weapons and all kinds of chemicals, fun stuff, you know. Let's see what happens if we use that. Oh my God, look at the babies, they have six arms and two heads. That's good for the future, let's use that in Iraq in the future. These type of things, the mentality behind it is sick. It is a sick mind that's gone totally wild. Okay, you have all this, the Al-Qaeda hoax, I love that one. Al-Qaeda is actually the name of CIA's database of agents that they trained. Good one, it means database. Okay. So it's the boogeyman. The boogeyman is the one. It used to, in the Cold War, it used to be Russians, East Germans. They were really good, like... That's the one that they used to. In the Second World War, one of the boogeymans were, were the Japanese. That, like, I was just told that Japanese sounds like constipation. Like... They were the devils, you know. Japanese, then it went to when the... Europe was divided, same power structure divided it. So it went into the boogeyman was uh, East German, Russian. Then it turned out when the Eastern uh, threat was gone, what, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? We need to invent a new one. The Muslims. The Muslims are good. They have strange names. They're like Abdul Karim Karumkara. That's a good one. That sounds really weird. And like big eyebrows, big mustache, very dark. They come from a country we don't even know where it is. Blame a bomb on him? My God, that's really good. So instead of understanding that Islam is a very peaceful religion, check it out yourself, I'm not making this up. They're not looking into global domination or anything like that. Look it out. I've been to many of these countries that uh, I went in very scared because I was surrounded by terrorists and crazy people running around shooting each other, screaming Allah. And what did I find? It was very odd, because they were so nice, so friendly, so generous, so open-hearted, so... And they're terrorists. I don't get it. Really, really odd. Anyway, so let's get to reality. We're getting back to reality. No, the Muslims, great, absolutely great. And they pumped us for so many years. So now, if I say Islam, your mind will think terror. If I say Muslim, your mind will say, terrorist. If I say, Abdul, oh my God, he's got a bomb. <laughs> you go to the airport, go to the airport. Who are the people being searched? Is it Abdul or is it me? I, with a father like Adolf, has the privilege <laughs> of walking right through. I can just walk like this. They don't even check me. They just say, welcome to my country. Thank you very much. Abdul, come. Stop, body search, scan him, turn him upside down, hold him in, you know, two days. What are you here for? Why are you here? Where's the bomb? Where's the bomb? Where's the bomb? I've done nothing. I'm a preacher, you know, for them. Oh. Brainwash, brainwashing. I must say, though, that brainwashing is the thing that is good. That we're here to clean it. So give it a good rubbing, you know get some soap in there, flush it, and then maybe we can start thinking in a cleaner way. And see Muslims as our brothers and sisters, beautiful people, all of which are just normal, ordinary people, even people in Iraq. 
Do you know? And the, this terror nation, do you know that more than 50% are younger than 15 now because the rest have been killed off? <laughs> We're talking Gaza. I mean, oh, it's, it's unreal. We just need to stop it. We got the 7 7 massacres in London, the Norwegian mass shootings, the Woolwich beheading, my absolute favorite, and I'm going to go into so sloppily done. The Boston Marathon, the ISIS hoax. Ooh, now there's a new one. Have you heard? It's called ISIS. No, not Iceman. I'm sorry, the silver. No, sorry, the joke. No, ISIS. ISIS was the one. Where did that come from? Had you heard about it like six months ago? Absolutely not. It just popped up, and now it's a mass, it's the biggest threat ever, and they have access to weapons of mass destruction. My <laughs> God, I need to be really scared, because these are the real bad guys. I'm sorry, there's an interview from 1990 where ISIS, there's an interview with people from the uh, Israeli, and they had looked into a lot of the Israeli um, uh, security uh, forces and Mossad and so on, and they said, it's really odd because like, if you work for the CIA, you write Mr. John Bennett, assistant of the director of the CIA. But when in Mossad, you never see the director of the Mossad. It doesn't work. So they came up with ISIS, which means Israeli, let me see, uh, Israeli security intelligence system or something like that. Services, services, whatever. It is just another name of the boogeyman. Absolute, excuse my French, bollocks. It is absolute lies that we're being fed. Okay, Sandy Hook. My God, there's, the whole world actually is filled with terrorists. I've spent 30 years looking for them. I have not found one. I have not found one that looks the way we're told terrorists look. I've found real ones, but they have very nice coats and jackets and BMWs and bodyguards and they, they live in houses that normally have white color on the outside. Okay. Sorry? Yeah. Not really here because I've got a time limit. I, I'd be very happy to. Uh, these things are very complicated so once you go into, that's why I focus on the templates. I'm sorry, but afterwards I'd be happy to. Okay, so one of the things that they use is a Roman tactic called problem, reaction, solution. It is the one most wonderful because you can just do it forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever, and ever, and ever like that. And because we are so brain dead that we will keep accepting it. So, how do we do it? How did the Romans do it? How do we just do the same thing? Problem, reaction, solution. If you look in the 70s, uh, for instance, in, in uh, Chile, Chile, when uh, Salvador Allende was elected president, what did they do there? They had uh, uh, people from the CIA, they were, they were getting fed up because uh, the American forces, the thing is with the global elite, I'm just going to quick the structure, the financial center, London, the religious center, Rome, the Vatican, and the war center is in Washington. And between these centers, it goes like this, like this. And what we're talking about is drugs, oils, weapons, pedophile gangs, organ uh, uh, smuggling, awful thing. Lots of, of satanic ritual. I mean, the mindset of these people, I do not know how they work, but they are not normal. Anyway, so in the, in the 70s, uh, we had, for instance, the, uh, when the overtake of Salvador Allende, he was elected president, and so they thought, oh, United Fruit, Standard Oil, all of these companies said, this guy, my God, he's giving back the, the, the plantations, everything to the people of the country. My God, something needs to be done. So what did they do? They did a military coup. Yeah. So officially, it was the military that took over. Absolutely not. They had a few... Uh, hand-picked people in, the, in Chile, some generals, low-key generals, and what they did was they went in with a whole machine back with CIA and just went uh, overnight, more or less, took out Salvador Allende, shot him, killed the whole government, bop, 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 bop. But what happened, they, in a very quick or short period of time, they got into a position of power. 
great for them. But a power that was very messy because from when the people of that country woke up the next morning when they understood, my God, there's a, a weird guy in a uniform with a massive gun pointing at us that have taken over our beautiful country. They started having demonstration, underground movements, guerrillas, all of these things. So the new government, the military junta, they said, my God, we need to stop this. So they started mass arresting people in the thousands. They filled the jails, they filled football stadiums, they arrested everyone, all of us, you know, all of us in here would have been arrested like, whoop, that's the first one to go. Poets, artists, all of that, free-thinking individuals, chop, 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 chop. They mass-executed them, they, all of that. But it was so messy because the more they killed, the more problems with, with family members and, and all of these things, the, the, it got messy, messy, messy. So they had to torture them to find out more where they're hiding, where they're hiding then kill them, then have problems with their families, then with their friends. It's like messy, not the way to go. The way to do it instead is to secretly create a problem. This problem is almost always in the shape of a bomb nowadays because they need drama. Because what they're looking for, they create a problem secretly to get a reaction from us and the reaction they want is an emotional reaction not using this one, the emotional reaction saying, oh my God, oh my God, something needs to be done. And they turn towards me, who they do not know was the one that secretly created a problem and said, we have elected you, please move forward. You have to solve this problem. And then I say, well, <laughs> the only way I can solve this problem is by serving you the solution. And the solution every single time is, you have to give up your rights. You have to be more and more surveilled. You have to accept more and more military force police. You have to accept tanks in the street, drones flying around, you, people in uniform kicking in your doors, SWAT teams, whatever, in the name of your security. It is for you. Don't forget that I'm not doing it for me. No, 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 no. It is for you. Don't forget that in the name of your security. That's why if you go to an airport today, you have to soon, they will strip you off whatever, you know, turn you upside down, scan you to also create more cancer in your body, you name it, for the security of you, when they are the ones who create the whole terror in the first place. Okay, so the preparations. <sighs> but um, create a problem. That's the one. Think of this as, if you were in, in, uh, in Hollywood, if it's like an action film. You can't have a poetic film, you know, with a bit of poetry in the background, some violence. That won't get the reactions. Maybe a little tear, but we're talking about uh, that type of reaction. Create a problem. And what they want is drama, smoke, dead people, blood everywhere to get this thing. So the one that they've used on a lot of occasions now, Mass shootings or bombs? I'm going to go into bombs here. Katoom, the patsy. The patsy, because we need to blame it on someone. We can't take responsibility of this. You cannot look at me. It was that guy. Okay, so what you do is you create a patsy. This patsy is always totally innocent. It's normally somebody that I, I am the one who are in power, okay? It is somebody that I normally have problems with anyway. Yeah, at this time of, of uh, development or whatever you want to say, it is uh, the truth seekers, the freedom seekers, it can be yogis, it can be homeless, it can be veterans. These are the th groups that they are targeted. Once again, you, me, are the type of people, future enemies to this group. Very close now. So the Patsy, and the Patsy, it, if it's an individual, he needs to look good in media. That's the thing. For y to, cr to convince you, he was the bad guy, okay? So it used to be we had the Muslims. Now they're getting out of fashion of it. They're still using it from time to time just to spice it up again. When but now they changed from that over to uh, geeky looking people, uh, totally drugged. Or now, fi now they moved it more and more so that we will start fearing anyone. So now the late ones have become blonde, blue-eyed. And latest, some of the mass shooting in, in uh, Beverly Hills and so on, my God, he was a model. 
but he had a problem with women, so he had to shoot them all. Anyway, false evidence. So I first create, I, I find someone that I want to blame the whole thing on. Very often it's somebody I'm in control of anyway. So this guy has absolutely no idea that he's going to take the fall for it. So while creating the problem, while get preparing the bomb, and so I also create evidence, false evidence, false evidence that as soon as the bomb goes off, it was him, it was him, it was him, don't look at me, it was him. Katung, position and timing of explosion. So where should I put this bomb? Maybe out in a barn in the countryside? Yeah, let's blow up a few cows, that's good. Uh, maybe a tractor, that would really get an impact. Sorry, we'd not. I need to place it very central where there are loads and loads of people. So it would be in a supermarket, train station, subway station, uh, like a massive big building. And one of the things, the key one, women and children. We're going for emotions here. Old guys or guys in general, sorry, me included, we don't really work. Women and children, that's the one. That's the one that gets the emotion going. This one gets disconnected. So women and children, often they love nurses and, and nuns as well, but that in the aftermath, they come in and they save them, and there's all these photos of the nun picking out this blown up child, part of the whole thing. Fake investigation, yeah, because not only do I create the problem, I also create the investigation. These are my people. I control them, the key people in this investigation. This is through Freemasonry Network and other, uh, other hidden brotherhoods. That's how I control the whole thing. So the fake investigation will be on standby. As soon as the bomb goes up, they go in, boom, knocks out all normal investigators, no, all normal, honest, decent police people, detected. all of them pushed to the side. You will see that happens again and again. You will also see that once it happened, there's a delay. What would normally happen is delayed. This delay is to g let the people who pull the whole thing off, which are often mercenaries taken from the Gladio network or, or skilled military people that have put the uh, explosives, everything in place, they need to be able to get away. So they clear the scene. So there's this, people call in, oh my God, there's an explosion. The call is not taken for like two, three, four, nine, five minutes, or there's a slight delay, the, the cars don't come, they don't arrive on time. Then, once the whole team is out, the cars come in. My God, we just close in the whole area. We will look in all the wrong places, but very closely, you know, where is he? Where is he? Where is he? I'm sorry, he just left that way. So there's this whole uh, media is filming them. My God, it's so efficient. Thank God we're in a democracy while they're getting out like that. Media leakage. Before this happened, we need to get the boogeyman going. So there will be like preparations to get your subconscious going. So if we're looking at the yogis, how many are yogis in here? Oh, a few of them. You will be the targeted because you eat vegetables as well as doing weird postures. You know, <laughs> so these things I will leak out in media. You know, like this. I would say something like, you know, this yoga group. They meet on Tuesdays. They have secret meetings. It's not all of them are official. And there's this bearded guy who are their guru. If he says something, they will, they will follow, and maybe they've got weapons underneath the floor. This is the type they will leak out. I'm exaggerating, not a lot, but often they won't do it about this country. It would be like, you know, the North Korean yogis. They're so violent. People here are peaceful. The North Korean, and there's like documentaries coming out. Ooh, yogis, vegetables, whoa like this, so it will be in your subconscious, like, oh my God, this group. So as soon as it goes off, boom, the bomb goes off, my subconscious, said, and they point at the guy, my God, I know I've read something about him, it's him, it's him, I know it is, because I know I heard about it. Sorry, part of the plan. Communication shutdown. When you look at these major conspiracies, JFK, the Estonia, sinking of Estonia, 9-11, uh, 7-7, what happens is that suddenly, just before the bomb goes off, and for about half an hour, an hour, when they're not in total control of the, they need to be in total control of the story leaking out, suddenly mobile phones won't work, 
normal telephones won't work, nothing of the normal communication system will, won't work. And that is blamed on, they say, oh, everybody tried to call and see if you, they were okay. Are you okay? Are you okay? okay? So the whole system just broke down. Sorry, not true. It is shut down so that they are in total control, leaking it out exactly the story that, that goes. Also, one thing that you will see is that as soon as this happens, when all these things are pumped out in media, you will hear r the reporter coming with the solution. Listen when it happens. Within a minute or so, this reporter from CNN or Fox News or whatever, they're so intelligent because just within minutes, it was Saddam Hussein. <laughs> My God, what a detective. No, it was bin Laden. No, we need more gun control. No, we, it was the structure of the, of the buildings. Within minutes, or they interview somebody in the street just by, yeah, it, we, it was the structure, you know, the heat of the, of the fuel just melted the whole structure so it fell down. Who was the guy they interviewed? Where did that come? Around 9-11, and Nils Herod will tell you for sure, that all the people that they interviewed that day live on TV, were all connected to the different networks. It was people working in the cafeteria, it was the wife of a CEO, it was the, all of them were connected to the same media that was pumping out these images. Okay, so very important to be aware of. Insurance, when it comes to blowing buildings up, why don't we do it like this, we pick one of the buildings that we control anyway, we own it, and it's normally a building that has a major problem, crack in the foundation, asbestos, fungus, bad, uh, you know, they not, haven't got a lot of, of uh, people renting and so on. So what do they do? They blow up that one, so they don't have to rebuild it and so on. And then, just a week or two before this is going on, well, this bomb goes off, you will see that the policy have just by coincidence been changed to include terror acts. They're so lucky, these people. I mean, it's incredible, you, you know? Distraction, we heard that one. You will see that very often when these things go off, just before it happens, something else. There's a fire out in an industrial area. There's a that, there's a something, there's a big accident somewhere that makes the media on location go there. And then while they're there, fixing whatever, that's when it happens. So they have, oh my God, we need to get back. Once they're back, the whole team is out outside, the whole thing, so you don't have problems with the media either. A drill, they also love drills. You will see that the, the last five, six years, drills are the thing that they do. There's a, a drill identical to what's going down at the same time. So what starts out as a drill, many of the people involved in this drill has absolutely no idea that it suddenly goes live. It's totally compartmentalized. They do not know about the whole situation. Many of them believing it is a drill. And that one of the reasons they have these drills are to get explosives in place, to get away with people seeing people, you know, with different vehicles, putting the explosives in. Oh, it's just part of that. It's going to have a drill. They're going to do all of these things. Drills are very, very uh, important in these things. As soon as you hear of a drill, put a big question mark to the event. And I would say, I would just suggest, whoever is listening to this, up until now we have studied these things after they happened. I would say, let's turn it around. As soon as you hear about a drill in your hometown or wherever, go there, start filming them, make it very obvious that they are observed. It will look like a film set. You know, make them very aware, film them, stream it out on YouTube live, and just show it, and then possibly defuse it. The more we put the light on them, the diff more difficult it is. Not violence, light. Okay, so we got everything in place. We got the, the patsy prepared, the evidence, the investigation, everything is ready. Now it's time to blow the whole thing up. When do we do it? Do we do it in the middle of the night? Absolutely not, when people are asleep. No, we need to hit people when they're the most emotional. So very often, it is in the mer early morning hours, around 9.30, 8.30, people have just had their first coffee, not really awake, on their way to work, 
with going with the kids to kindergarten, as many people as possible are in motion so that as many people as possible will feel affected. Oh my God, had I gone there 20 minutes later, it could have been me, and so on. So that's when they do it, early morning, just had a second cup, morning news are on, not really awake, and here we go, boom, that's where it goes. You just blow the whole thing up, and right away, you pump out in media all these horrific, horrific, horrific images, blown up children and women, that's what it goes. Smoke, explosions, pieces of bodies, awful, awful images to get the reaction. And the reaction is, oh my God, who was the, who was the Patsy again? Oh my God, was it the yogis? Oh my God, we need to get the yogis, the yogis, the yogis. So when I said, then they turned towards me and said, my God, these yogis, you need to, you need to deal with them I, before they do another of these awful things. And then I said, well, the only way I can do it with this violent group of yogis, I mean, such postures, I'm sure they're training like martial arts as well, using these stretches, you know. So the only way we can deal with that is pumping the, fil the streets filled with tanks. We blow them up with drones. We might as well kill their families and friends while well, we're doing it um, for your security. So, presenting the solution, and by the way, let's give it martial law. Just to make people w used to the idea. So it's martial law, you have the patsy, which is pointed out like a small little group. Why on earth would you have martial law? It doesn't make sense at all. It's there to make you used to the idea, for you to get used to seeing tanks and police like robber cops and SWAT teams. I mean, they can hardly walk anymore because they're so loaded. For why? It was a group of yogis. No, sorry, we need even more helicopters and tanks and anti-military, whatever, nailing the patsy. So as soon as the shots go up or the explosion go up, nail the guy, boom, take him away, knock him out, kill him, stuff him away. You will see the way they get rid of this patsy. Very often he has absolutely no chance to defend himself. He ends up dead or suicide or whatever. And then we have the cleanup teams. The cleanup teams goes into like technical, they're there to collect technical evidence. That's the official story. Not really. What they're doing, they clean up the real evidence and they plant the fake evidence. So, okay, dealing with opposition. Well, I explained that. And then, in the end, if we don't give up, like with 9-11, we're still, after all of these years, pushing forward the questions, what happened, who was behind it? So many focused on the methods, I would say, also put a major focus on why was it accomplished and who did it more than how did they pull it off. I think go for the bad guys. Once you get them, they can explain, you know, say, okay, we use that or that or that. Great, now we know, so maybe we can use this kind of technique for a good thing in, in life. But first of, first of all, get them, okay? So, but what they do is when people keep pushing, 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 part of the plan is a commission. They will, from official I, who was the one who created the problem, I would say, okay, since I'm a truth seeker myself, I am a man of honor, I will give you this commission. And the commission will have a fancy name. It will be called the truth and, what should we call it? The truth beyond conspiracy commission or the truth for uh, humanity or the stardust in whatever. Some fancy that sounds really official. Once again, people that I control, you will see that many of these commissions, it's the same people that have been on commissions before and they just swap you know one is the the c what do you call it them the chief of the the head of the whole thing the other one is the secretary they just swap around oh it's a democracy we do bop, 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 bop. it's a democracy again and the only thing that their task is to spend a year looking into it saying and then after one year i i promise you they will come out with a report like this saying absolute nothing and what they will say is the investigation, the, my people, they did a great job. They made some mistakes, uh, but we have pointed them out these mistakes. The commission is not looking into the crime itself. They're looking into the first investigation. And then they would say, well, we've done a great job, and there you go. 
Now, if the population do not buy that one, if we keep pushing, they would say, okay, since I'm a man of Auburn, I will give you another commission. In the Palma assassination in Sweden, there were three, almost four different ones that just looked into the commission before and before and before. And then in the end, people are so fed up with the whole thing that they will just forget it. Instead of seeing who were behind it and this cabal that are behind so much of this mayhem are still in power. So, shall we see if we can get a little... If you don't believe me... Does the government work for us or do we work for the government? Can the federal government take credit for saving us from a plot of its own creation? Tonight, has the federal government kept us safe or does it just want us to think that it has kept us safe? Since the tragedy of 9-11, numerous crazies and low-level copycats have engaged in criminal behavior which they hoped would result in the, death, the deaths of innocent Americans and somehow advance their cause of jihad. If you ask the leadership of the FBI, most of whose field agents are tireless, dedicated, constitution-supporting professionals, it will tell you that it, the FBI, has foiled about 17 plots to kill Americans during the past 10 years. What it will not tell you is that there have been 20 foiled plots, and of them, three were interrupted by members of the public. The 17 that were interrupted by the feds were created by the feds. We all remember the three that were foiled by diligent Americans, the shoe bomber, the underwear bomber and the Times Square bomber. In all of these cases, the crimes charged were those of attempting to kill and conspiring with others to do so. In all three of those cases, alert Americans on transcontinental flights or in the streets of New York City told authorities of bizarre behavior or actually subdued the threats themselves. There was no foiling by the FBI. The plotters were, thankfully, bumbling fools who had poorly planned their criminal behavior and who ended up harming no one. All three are serving life terms. But the more curious cases are the remaining 17 for which the federal government has taken credit. They all have a common and reprehensible thread. They were planned, plotted, controlled, and carried out by the federal government itself. In all of these 17 cases, from the Fort Dix 6 to the Lackawanna 7 to the Portland Parade Bomber, the feds found young men of Muslim backgrounds, loners who were bitter at America. They befriended them, cajoled them, and persuaded them that they could change the world by killing Americans. In all these cases, agents worked undercover and portrayed themselves to the targets as Arabs of like un-American mind. In some cases, the federal agents used third parties to act as middlemen. The third parties were typically persons who had been convicted of crimes and who, in return for leniency at their own sentencings, were willing to work with the same feds who prosecuted them in order to help the feds and trap whomever else those feds were pursuing. Thus, in all 17 of these cases, because of the command and control of federal agents, no one was ever in danger, no one was harmed, no bomb went off, and no property was damaged. But in all those cases, the losers whom the feds targeted each believed that they were interacting with real plotters who would bring them cash and bombs. As we know, sometimes the cash arrived, but the bombs never did. The defendants were essentially charged and convicted for playing a game with federal agents. The most recent of those gener uh, government-generated plots was revealed yesterday. It has a new twist because it allegedly involves agents of the intelligence apparatus of the government of Iran. It, too, was destined to go nowhere, as the feds monitored and taped every move. It goes on a little bit like that. Did you hear? The FBI, these people that we are supposed to believe are there for our sake. CIA, FBI, NSA, NSC are their creation, their tools. They're part of it all of the time. So I'm not saying every single agent, absolutely not. There are lots of decent, very honest, but we're talking about core elements that are very, very criminal and that are, are controlled by an extremely, extremely, extremely criminal so-called global elite. One of my favorite is the beheading in Woolwich. Do you remember this one? Do you remember there was a I'm going to go into it, but like I said before, uh, the diversion, the way they use diversion. Do you remember when this happened? No. 
Most people don't. Because it was one week or just a few days before the so-called Bilderberg meeting in, in just outside London, 2013. That was the first year that this part of a world shadow government could not keep it a secret anymore that they existed. They were created in 54. They were here this year in the Marriott Hotel. And in 2013, that was the first year, 2012, 2013, where they could not keep it a secret anymore. So instead, they invited the media and said, oh my God, we're just, an, oh, we're just a small group of very decent people who are meeting for a cup of coffee and a muffin, and that we have total, total secrecy around it with incredible security measures, helicopters, snipers, police officers around it. That has nothing to do with it. You know, we're talking politicians on from the whole Western world, bankers, people from, from MI6, Google, you name it, all the key people from, from the Western countries are there. Okay, so just one week when, when the media globally was going, oh my God, that's so odd. What, are this group for real? We need to go there and have a look. So they were packing their bags and then suddenly chop, chop, chop. These guys chopped the head of an English soldier my God, against the British Empire. So instead of going to the Bilderberg meeting, very few people went there from the media. Instead, the whole focus was on these guys who chopped the head of an English soldier. So, I mean, this could not be a false flag. You must be kidding me. Right in the middle of London, absolutely no chance. So, I think, unfortunately, that there was this technical problem before, and this is uh, the, wrong, uh, the wrong video. But what it shows is that you have two people, uh, black people, uh, North African, uh, and they say they came from Nigeria or around there, and the whole thing is that the official story goes like this. They were coming driving in a car, they saw this English soldier, who, by the way, was not in a uniform, who had a T-shirt where it says, Help for Heroes. He had it on his front. He had a jacket and a backpack on. They came from behind, saw this T-shirt from the front, got so upset with somebody who had a T-shirt on where it said, Help for Heroes, that they said, My God, once again, we need to do something. So what they did was, they went across the street, knocked him over with a car, okay? Then they went out, out of the car, had a meat cleaver, thank God, and a knife, and they chopped the head of this English soldier, then pulled the body out in the middle of the street, and then there was some guy uh, with a mobile phone filming the whole thing, and then this guy who was on this picture before, this guy, he said, Oh my God, we're very sorry that the, the, the population had to, or the women had to see this, but we're doing it in the name of Islam, of Allah. We're soldiers of Allah, and we see this on a daily basis in our home country, and so on. Then, after he's filming that, he goes across the street. Then they wait for 25 minutes for the police to arrive. It was only because they chopped the head of an English soldier. I'm sorry, 25 minutes. It's not that long. I take a rock, I throw it on a, on a window, within two minutes, I'm up against the wall. 20, time it. Tw it's a long time, okay. So they came, the police come, they were standing around asking people, can you please call the police, can you please call the police? And then finally, when the police comes, they attack this police car, and out jumps uh, four police officers, bum, 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 they shoot them, they go down, and that's it, that's the official story. So, you see, I used to be an extra uh, in film sets in, on Mallorca, and one of the things, it's, it's really boring when you're an extra, the thing is, you're one in the background, and I'm really good at doing things like this. Point A, point B, and then take two, point A, Point B, you do that, the background action has to be con continuous 
because when you cut the final film together or commercial or whatever it is, you need the background to do the same thing. Okay? And they make cue markers because we are not very intelligent people. So point A, point B. Walk from there, walk from there. All the people in the area needs to be controlled. Okay? Because when you film, a, it can be any time of film shoot, in a film or whatever, you cannot have people, normal people, in, on the uh, side of the street walking like that and then start looking into the camera. And, what are you filming? You know? What's going on here? No, you need the pedestrians, you need everybody to be involved. So when it comes to uh, a film shoot in a city, the producers of the film, they go to the local authorities, they get the permission to close off a certain piece of a street. Okay, So they do that, and then the whole uh, traffic thing is redirected around it. And then normally uh, they have extras, they need background action, so normally these people are come, they come in two buses normally. And then you have, <coughs> uh, you need equipment, you need the makeup, you need uh, clothing, lighting, all of these things. And normally they arrive in white trucks. I do not know why they're white, but all the film sets I've been on, white trucks. These trucks come and you just pull it up. There's a perfect uh, makeup studio, all the uniforms, whatever you need, it's there. Okay. And then the director, in the end, the, the actors are normally, they have makeup and they're, they're, they're early, the, the extras are there very early. And then you have the director. He comes late. And he normally comes in a private car or cab because he's very important. So he gets his own chair where it says director, and that's it. Okay, so we look at this thing. I even have one of those. This is where it happened. This is where the car came, they saw the guy, they ran across, boom, hit him, and this is where they parked. Okay, so you look at what's going on. You've got, uh, you got a primary school here, lots of children, things. you got the Royal Artillery barr Barracks. I mean, this guy, they just saw the head off. He had about 300 bodies there. Of course, when they heard chop, 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 maybe they would go and see, hey, can we help you? Are you in a bit of a distressed situation? Okay, we will look at that, what happened, and so on. Of course, mid of this midday in, in central London, there would be lots of traffic, you know, car queues, people honking their horns, I'm getting late for work, what is going on, and so on. We have a look at what goes on. We will see. Will this work or will it not? Oh, <laughs> okay. Can, can, you, can you see the guy, the woman who just passed? Can you see there's no blood on his hands? Absolutely not. Here's a second. Notice, I, can't, I don't know if you can see the colors, but these, his hands are dark, dark red. He's just chopped the, here's a without blood. There's the body. Here is the woman again. Okay. You, you see, blood, blood, not on, his not on his clothes, just on his hands. Also, please um, uh, notice that his hands are a lot lighter than his face. Did you see that? L a lot lighter. And then you had this woman who was, act I mean, she had done shopping, so of course she had to come go home. There's this guy who just saw the head of a so uh, soldier, and he, she's with a trolley. Do you know, and when you look at different takes, there's four women, very brave women, I must say. I mean, I don't know about you, but somebody chops the head of someone. I mean, I'm, I'm not really, I would freak out a bit or at least react, maybe make a phone call. Listen, darling, I've just seen somebody lose his head. Literally, you know, I'm a, I'm a bit sh shaken up. No, they're on their way home with a trolley. <laughs> I mean, why even bother? And then you see the different takes with and without blood you will see that there are different angles. It's not the same. You will also see that this filming starts inside a bus. When you see a longer clip, you can go on YouTube and find these. Inside a bus. Remember how the extras came there. Two buses when it's a, a lot of extras. So it starts inside the bus. And then uh, you see here, see, there's one bus. And the filming that films this guy was inside a bus. Two buses. What is that? That's a white truck. What is it doing there? It is blocking off a side street. That street. 
where the mulberry thing is. You see? So that one, I would say equipment, makeup, uniforms, dress, whatever. The, that one, and then you have a cab, okay, cab director. So you got the exact vehicles on site had it been a film shoot. Then you have where are all the people? Where are all the people? You know, down there, up there, everybody looking like that. Okay, one of the first things you learn as an extra is do not look into the camera. Whatever you do, don't look into the camera. Because it's very, when, you know, like if you have a Fanta commercial and somebody is like, doesn't work. So all the extras, any commercial, you will see people looking like this. We look at these people, where are they looking? That direction. Okay, here's the guy help for, t help for heroes. You see? Backpack on front, it's the front. You can hardly see it. Would you think this is a soldier guy? I mean, if he came in a uniform, okay, maybe. But this is just because he came like this, let's saw the head of him. That's another guy. This is the car, it's standing there. You see, there's absolutely no skid marks. It's on the wrong side of the street. It's up against one of these signposts. These signposts are designed to collapse on impact, okay? So to, for the less injury to anything that hits it, so as soon as you hit it, it, it will collapse. Okay, is it collapsing? Nothing, it's standing there, there's not even a mark. The whole front of the car, oh sorry, the whole, oh, I'm not a technician, am I? The whole front, you cannot see it here, but it's just, yeah, there you can see it, it's just totally squashed. So you look at accidents where a car hits a pedestrian. It should look similar. Does it? No. Normally when a pedestrian hits it, you have, you'd, might have a small little bump on the, uh, on the front, but the major impact is on top of the hood or the window shield. That's it. Standard. Here, totally different. It is totally like it's run right into a concrete wall. So, of course, the airbags would have been pumped out had it had an impact like that. Well, they're not. They're punctured. They're not even expanded, you know. So, you look in front of here, that's where they chopped the head off. Of course, anyone who's chopped the head of someone knows that it's a very greasy business. I don't know when you did that last time, but there would be a lot of blood. Absolutely nothing. Then later in the day, when the press helicopters come, there's blood on the pavement. How did that happen? Oh my God, we need to change it. We need correct, correct, correct. That's how they do it. Okay. So, uh, then, and here's this brave woman, absolutely incredible woman, who on both takes walks identical. Point A, point B. There are cue markers here in the streets where he, he crosses. You can see that on YouTube. Exactly where he starts. Q marker, white dot, two, white dot, two like that. In situations where in South Africa or something like where the, you have very violent things where maybe uh, you've got a crowd and somebody's being killed or something like that, the, the nature of the human being will be to get close to whoever done it, throw things at him, hit him with a stick, shout at him, at least take photos with your mobile or do something, call the police. What happens here? Uh, 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 nothing. And the traffic in the background, by the way, just boom, yum, 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 yum. Anything here? No. And here's the bus where the extras came with the other one, blocking that one. So the only thing you need to do is a sign there saying, go that way. Okay? You don't even ne need that because that's the exit. we in London, and that's where it's blocked off. So it's blocked there with the bus, blocked there with the bus. That's the director's car, and that's the equipment. Okay, he's standing right outside the entrance to the army barracks. There should be guards normally, and there are hundreds of soldiers there. Where are they? Not there. Then we have this one. Of, I mean, speak of brave women. This woman comes, she gets off the bus when she's seen this awful slaughter, and then she goes up, she goes like this, very upset. <laughs> you will see her on YouTube. They're like this, and they go up to the killers, and say, my, how dare you do a thing like this? 
I am so upset with you. And then what she does, she lies down next to the headless. Oh, come on. I mean, how bad can you do it? This body, no blood, no head, no nothing. And she lies down and you can hear the, the witnesses say she lay down to comfort him. <laughs> it's like, come and, and the whole script before that, because you need to listen as it was a film scene. The, fil it's the only thing that is missing is, is the violence in the background. It goes like, a violent terror act has happened today. A soldier, a British soldier, with the help of it for Hero's T-shirt, was brutally slaughtered. Now the violence from Baghdad has come to the streets of London. It's like so pumped up, you know. It, listen to it again. I, I wish I could have played it. Anyway, so this is the barracks. Home for Heroes, this was a few years, September 2010. The Home for Heroes. They just did a 50 million pounds refit of the whole thing. So I think they maybe needed to say, you know, we did it for a good cause. So we were really using the impact. These soldiers have their own rooms, their own separate bathrooms and so on. You know, so we, anyway, but these guys, I'm sorry, they were looking the other way. They were on a maneuver somewhere, all of them. So none of them came out very, very sad. Okay, good guy, bad guy. Old films, how do your mind works? The hero has a white hat, a white horse, a white shirt. He might have black trousers. The bad guys, look in the old westerns, <laughs> black, 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 black horse. He's the devil. Okay, look at this one. This is the victim. Fair skin, he's got the royal emblem in the background, red uniform, lots of gold, and his name was Lee Rigby. He was a drummer. Have you seen the drummer boy, the story of the drummer boy? We're back to the subconscious. Rigby, Eleanor Rigby, dee 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 dee, and the grave was empty, nobody came. Oh, it's so sad, oh my God. That is the way they do it. That's the way they play us. Okay, you see here, you compare. White hat, white, 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 black, black, black. I'm not saying anything about African-American. Not, it's not a racial thing. This is the way they play us. Black, 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 black. His hands, as you saw, without the blood, very light. So they had to give him extra makeup to make him even more black. And the clothes, absolutely no blood, even though he just slaughters this guy, and so on. Then, oh, God. I hope I can get this working. Check this guy. He's my absolute all-time favorite. This is a, a witness. Okay, you see the police have been there. Bulletproof vest. They're really doing a good job. Check this guy out. The size of his uniform. When he moves around, it is... I love it. I love it. I hope this will work. Please the, work. The murderers were telling people to call the police and then... Check the sleeves. About five to seven minutes later, the police come. They walk towards the police car with the weapons and then the, one, the, the police said he jumped out and shot the murderer. Good evening. I'm here to give you an update about an incident that's currently unfolding uh, this afternoon Listen. in Woolwich. And to give you further details of the situation. As you can understand, this situation is fastly un involving, uh, evolving and at this stage I can only give you the information that I have available. At approximately 2.20 this afternoon, Police officers were called to an assault in John Wilson Street, Woolwich, where one man was being assaulted by two other men. A number of weapons were reported as being used, including a report of a firearm. Officers, including local officers from Greenwich Police Station and shortly, fire, shortly after firearms officers, attended the scene. On arrival, they found a man who was later pronounced dead. At this early stage, I'm unable to provide any more information about the man who has died. Okay. Can I just point out one thing? Later pronounced dead. He did not have a head. I mean, you don't need a lot of medical expertise to say, I think this guy's had it, you know. I don't know about you, but he's got a major headache missing. You know, there's nothing left. Later pronounced dead. Come on, guys, make it professional. In the old days, they used to have some kind of pride in their conspiracy. Look at JF JFK, great conspiracy, lots of preparation, skilled people, great budget, 
good mercenaries. Everything was carried out great. We're still confused how they did it. 9-11, more sloppy. It was a major conspiracy, a major operation, many multiple layers, difficult to keep clean. They did a pretty good job. I mean, at least the result was good. These things, come on. I mean, somebody is having a good laugh, you know. And how many of you did know this? Not a lot of you. Okay. I'm looking at myself too, but I don't, I'm not all uh, knowing about these things either. I'm just pointing things out that we have bought. And the result of this is, my God, the Muslim, the minority, the day after this, let's see if I got that, the whole, here we go again, blame the Muslims. If you, uh, you Eyewitnesses recalled what they saw in horrific detail. Listen to the... These guys are chopping this guy to pieces, literally hacking at something. Yes. Like it was a bit, a piece of meat. These two guys were crazy. They, they, they just were not there. They were just animals. London's most senior police officer said the investigation was now being led by the Counter-Terrorism Command. We've seen a horrific attack on the streets of London. A terrible murder has, been, has occurred. We've launched an investigation led by the Counter-Terrorist Command and we've made two arrests in relation to that awful crime. awful crime. We now ask that people obviously give us the opportunity to thoroughly investigate this crime, this crime to make sure we get to the bottom of who committed it and why. And we urge that people remain calm during that process. But it was anything but calm. No, it wasn't. Do you see Scotland Yard we're talking about, I bet you, I'm not checked into these two officers, Freemasons, for sure. This is the secret network behind them, how they control these people. You know, like with the different mass shootings, you have the same sheriff at three different mass shootings in three different states. They didn't even bother to change the hat or change the name. It's like this guy has an incredible career, just boom, 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 and at the exact same spots. Such luck or bad luck if you're him, you know? And, and with these different mass shootings, the whole thing is to get, make the weapon the problem. They want to de-arm the population of the states. The state is the last frontier where the population is armed. So it's not like we have all these mass shootings. My God, we need to take care of these mentally ill people. No, it's the automatic weapons, not single rifles. You're allowed to take, have them still you know, first we take the automatic ones, the heavy ones, and then we will take the single shots, and then we will take your knives as well, and then maybe you won't even be allowed to grow veggies anymore, which is not, they, they're trying to ban that. Do you know the signs of, of terrorists, what you can be taken for as a terrorist in the States today? If you are missing a part of one finger, I'm not making this up, if you have food for more than seven days in your house. In some, some states, you are not allowed to collect water, rainwater. You, they raid houses with vitamins. They raid them with SWAT teams. It's like, oh God, it's like, come on. And, and <laughs> I'm not sure I can watch this again. This is the family of Lee Rigby. And then, please notice the end of this. Are you okay with this? I don't know if you're emotionally strong enough to We are satisfied it. that justice has been done. But unfortunately, no amount of justice will bring Lee back. The family of murdered Fusilier Lee Rigby speaking outside court after watching as these Bad two guys. men were Bad convicted guys. of a killing which shook the country. Michael Adebalajo he and Michael Adebuali from the behind Adebuali and the car. Down, How did they even see this T-shirt? near Woolwich Barracks in May. They were convicted by a jury at the Old Bailey and now face a lengthy prison sentence. Well, the whole country was completely shocked by the murder of Lee Rigby. And the whole country building. united in condemnation of what happened. Now we are united sure through this awful crime. crime. We are united. We have killed Hear more today. brave women. It's because m Muslims are dying and another daily one. by British soldiers. And this British soldier is one, is an eye for an eye and a two for a two. During his defense, and Adam here, Bellagio where nobody court, saw, I will never regret he never, that's the not filmed. Allah. That is all I can say. I'm a muhajid, I'm a soldier, I'm doing what Allah commands me to do. I can't do anything else. No, I'm the 29 year old went on to say, I'm a soldier, I'm a soldier of Allah, and I understand that some people might not recognize this. 
but we are still soldiers in the sight of Allah as a muhajid. This is all that matters. No, that's Lee will be sorely terrorist. missed by his siblings, nieces, nephew, and all of those who loved him. Women and children, siblings, nephews, and ITV, I just want to say here, did you see that you got ITV news, okay? And then you got ITV productions. Who, what, who had made this ITV productions? You check out their website, they say, we are in no way connected with the news thing. We make productions, they make film productions. They put it right in front of our eyes. ITV Productions, thank you so much. And by the way, when you're trying to get hold of these films that was filmed by who knows who the people were that filmed them with these mobile phones, they have never been identified, it's copyright ITV Productions. Go wonder, it's incredible. By the way, the guy that filmed it, after uh, the guy stopped talking about that, I'm very sorry that women had to see this, this guy is standing filming, you would think, that this might be a major thing in his life, you know, that maybe I should follow the guy, maybe I should film the headless body or something like that. No, he stands there and waits until the guy walks up. I'm not sure I'm making my point, but can you see what's going on here? Can you see the Scotland Yard, the English police, the media, who, ITV Productions, everybody, David Cameron, Bilderberger, who oh, this awful murder, thank God for justice, because we are a wonderful country that really, really believes in justice and democracy, and it has united the whole nation against the minorities. Get the Muslims out of here. Let England be white and clean and, and so on. Do you see it's playing with our minds? And this is just one example. There's so many of them. I have a lot more. I'm normally somebody that doesn't speak a lot. My wife says that I'm too quiet. But when it comes to these things, I'm like, it, it makes my head want to explode when we buy into these things because the people behind it, these secret networks, where the Bilderberg Group is one, the Trilateral Commission is one part, the C Council on Foreign Relations, people you have elected like the former NATO, I don't, I'm not so into the German members of these groups. Oh, sorry, the Danish. They act like the Germans many years ago. But uh, uh, you are the ones that are accepting that it's going on. So am I. So instead of me showing, because I wanted to go into how the, all these assassinations are connected, carried out by the same mercenaries, the same little group of, uh, of uh, teams, I, I've done loads, I think hundreds of in radio interviews, so if you want to go to my website, Light on Conspiracies, there are lots of different interviews where I go into details about the teams of assassins that have been used. The same teams of assassins that carried out the assassination of JFK. I'm talking about the people on street level who have absolutely no idea where the order came from, why they were killed, they just carried out a killing. Same people in Dili Plaza. There were some that was actually there in Dili Plaza that was also present in Stockholm 23 years later taking out the Swedish Prime Minister. So some of the same people were part of taking out Robert Kennedy in 68. They were part of taking out Martin Luther King in 68. There was just one month in between. They were part of killing Che Guevara in Bolivia. They were part of doing the overthrow of Salvador Allende. They were the core group in what was called Operation Condor, which was tracking down Allende supporters all over the world, killing them. They were blowing up Orlando Letier in Washington, D.C. They were very central in the whole Vietnam War, Operation Phoenix, killing thousands of people. One of them, this small group called Operation 40, later became the head of the CIA under George Bush Jr. And many, many of these people, when they were uh, convicted of crimes or taken, they were then pardoned by George Bush Sr., who was the paymaster for this group from the early 1960s and onwards. I'm not going into these details because time is flying, but I just want to say many, many times people approach me and say, but listen, what can I do? What can I do? You are pointing out a lot of dark things. This is not my intention for you to think that, oh my God, let me go and hang myself. 
my intention is to expose this so we can stop it so that this world can get a chance to become this absolute beautiful, beautiful world it's designed to be. You know, check it out, check out nature, check out animals when you leave them alone, when you don't involve yourself and try to mess them up. The nature is designed for absolute balance, absolute beauty, absolute harmony. And then we have this small group that for generations has been messing the whole thing up. So I feel we are in, in a super, super interesting and exciting time because once we make them stop, this world will automatically, just by them stopping, will just co go to a totally new level. And I'm not saying revolution, like go and chop the head of these people. That is not the way. You check out revolutions, check out history. People chop off the heads of people. What happens within a year or two? They're worse than the ones they just chopped the head off. Revolution, listen to the word, revolution. It just repeats itself. Evolution is the one. And the way to go, I would suggest, is that they control us through fear. Fear is their tool. In this universe, fear is what we call a very, very low frequency, a very, very low energy. These people are very aware of energies because everything in the universe are energies. You go, you look into a sharp enough uh, microscope, you will see that whatever looks uh, solid, it's vibrating, it's energies, and they are so aware and trying to keep us aware from the knowledge that these... So it's through energies that they are trying, so they're through media that they control to a massive extent, they're trying to push us down, push us down, keep us fearful, keep us in absolute uh, despair and depression, because that is where they can control us. So I say, let's go into a higher energy, because if in a laboratory, if you see where two energies are very low and a very high, if you let them meet in a, in a laboratory, what happens is not that they start struggling in the middle and you get like a middle wave thing coming out of it. The thing that happens is that when the two energies meet, the lower one gets annulled. It just boom, it goes like this. So what did that tell you? You look at the highest energy in, un in the universe, that is the one that we call love. The lowest one, pure terror. I'm not talking about love, I fancy you, baby, if you're kind to me. I'm talking about the love that can create miraculous things, absolute incredible things. And I see people like uh, Jesus, Buddha, Muhammad, these people like super hackers, I think. They cracked the code to the matrix. They said, aha, I got it, you know. Whatever the problem is, whatever the energy is, meet it with a higher energy, meet it with the highest. Whatever the problem, meet it with love, and it will, boom, annul it. You will see these things. It's, it's, incredible. it's incredibly beauty to watch, beautiful to watch. I've been to war zones and uh, in many awful air situations and so on. If you can focus on the higher frequency, in a situation that is very dangerous, the higher, the more focused you can be in love, the less chance of you getting hurt. The less chance, or the bigger the chance of it suddenly evolving into something beautiful. So I, I have a little trick that I use. It's like if somebody starts shouting at me or point a gun at me or something like that, if the gun, you don't know if it's made of plastic or if it's not even loaded, it's just there to create fear. As long as they don't pull the trigger, you are fine, you know? You are fine. You, it's a matter of mindset. It really is, you know? So somebody starts shouting at you. Some try to put you fearful. And these, these days, riot teams, squad, whatever, I mean, the, the more they come like this, the, the more scared you're supposed to be. I'm saying, what works for me I've, and I've seen it, I've tried it in action, I've tried it in real life. If I focus on, uh, the word that works for me is divine. If I focus, when I see this screaming face before me, if I, instead of listening to the words and get scared, as soon as I get scared, I'm in his ball game. He is there to totally intimidate me, to knock my brains out, to scare the shit out of me. If I get fearful, if I try to defend myself, if I try to hit back, I'm in his ballgame. I am lost. He will squash me. 
if I focus on the word divine, it, you use whatever word that works for you, beautiful or whatever. I, that's the one that works for me. So I just, you got the screaming face or a gun or whatever. If I just divine, divine, keep my mind occupied. Do not let it go off into fear mode. Then I'm lost. Divine, 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 divine. He's somebody's father. He's somebody's son. He's somebody's brother. Divine, divine, divine. He's a beautiful human being. He does not know what he, do he does. You know, just keep it divine, divine. From being like this, very often, I mean, sometimes you get hit. I mean, it doesn't work every time. But I'm just saying. But what can happen, and what I've seen many times, especially if you stay in the frequency of love, is that this guy somehow gets disarmed. It's like, why are you not scared of me? You know, wh why are you not, I, I'm very, you know, I look scary, I, I, you know, I'm black, you know, um, why are you not buying into it? It defuses the situation many times. And then within a few minutes, maybe 10 minutes down the line, suddenly he's sitting talking next to you, you know, my wife doesn't understand me. She doesn't appreciate my uniform, you know. She doesn't like me going around in bulletproof vest and, and underpants, you know. He starts talking like that. Or, or last weekend we were out fishing, my son and I, you know, I really like him. Do you know, and then he'll buy you a beer or I'll buy him one or something. It is incredible when you're in that situation. You look at the Iranian Revolution. There was an unarmed population against the fourth strongest army in the world. They had nothing. They managed to get the whole army out of the way. They managed to get rid of the Shah. Very sadly, there was a bearded guy who took over that they had not checked out before. So they ended up in an even worse situation. But what happened was they went up to these soldiers that was threatening to kill them, and they killed thousands of them, putting roses down the barrel, you know. Nowadays, when they pull up mirrors, just saying, you know, when all these SWAT teams and whatever, or riot police holding them up, saying, listen, are you really, really proud of what you become, you know? Are, do you really think there's dignity into what you're doing? Do you really think it's worth knocking me in the head? I am somebody's mother, you know. I'm like 68. Do you really think you're a young guy kicking the whatever out of me? Is that really what you, where you became a soldier? These type of things, that is the thing that defuses it. So my suggestion, if I may humbly suggest this, whatever the situation, meet it with love. Meet it with a higher frequency. That is what they're trying to keep away from us. The way to get into a higher frequency is by gratitude. Fill your heart with gratitude. That will l get it up there. Look around you. There's always something to be grateful for. My God, I've got 10 toes. It is amazing. I can stand. I can look. I can walk. If I can't walk, then I can talk. If I can't talk, then I can eat. If I can't eat, then I have a bed to sleep in or whatever. Look around you. There's, if you focus, you can always find it. And the h more you focus, just do it purposely. And do it with feeling. It's not enough to say, I'm grateful. No, you're not. Because in the universe, the thing that pulls it into your life and that raises it is the feeling. Thinking, add the feeling, and it will start be pulling into your reality. And then you will become a beautiful example for others. The more you are something that do good, that you be, you, you, well, be good, do good, and do random acts of kindness. Instead of drive-by shootings, do drive-by huggings, you know, <laughs> hug a tree, hug a cup. Go do things that without expecting anything in return. You know, you see your neighbor, she's really old. When she doesn't know what you're doing, when she doesn't see you go there, clean her garden, she comes out, oh my God, I believe it. It's a miracle. It's a miracle gives her hope. You, down, r r you drive down the toll road, you know, pay for the car that comes after you. May, I bet you that guy might be really depressed and just thinking, oh my God, I'm all alone. There's absolutely no hope. He comes and th they say, you know, the car in front of you just paid for you. A total stranger. These 25 cents or whatever it is can give an incredible difference in somebody's life. You go in a restaurant, Pay for the coffee from that guy over there. Leave so there's no, he has no idea 
who you are. There's no, you know, I'm in debt or anything like that. It's just a beautiful thing. You need to give it without expecting anything. Give without expecting. Give, 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 and it will just come back to you among multifold. And now I will shut up. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, I think we can go on with some questions from the audience. Anytime. Yes. And I'm uh, sorry I've, I've gone a little over the time, but it's until five o'clock uh, before the next one is. So whatever I can do, wherever, or yes. answer questions, please. If you don't want, go and have a coffee. I'm st here for you, whatever. <laughs> yes. Can you just hold it like this one? Hi, Olu, again. Hi there. Um, yeah, I'm just wondering what you're telling people who are saying that don't focus on the darkness because that evokes fear, which is a strange uh, contradiction when saying, to them at least, when saying, uh, when you're focusing uh, on exposing those who bring fear by trying to evoke fear in people. Do you have anything to say about it? If I understand you right, this is a dilemma. It is a tricky one because it is a matter of exposing. It is a matter of exposing what's going on. But the thing is to not do it with hatred, to not do it with anger, to not hate these people. I, I go for what Jesus said. I'm not a religious person, but he was one hell of a guy. And what he said was, judge the sin, not the sinner. Forgive them because they do not know what they're doing. These people in uniform, they have absolutely no idea who, who, what they're pretending. They think they're doing the right thing, so don't blame them. You know, we're being played, all of us, against each other. So I would say, just like a cancer doctor, a, a, a good one, I'm not talking about the ones not good, but I'm saying you need to identify the problem. You need to expose it. You need to open it up and in great detail so that you can see the origins, you can see the me me metastasis or whatever it's called, the roots to whatever evil is in that body. And as soon as you expose it and open it up, then the body can start healing itself. So I would say point out these things, but don't do it with a dark energy. And when it comes to people around you, a standard thing for all of us when we start waking up is that first we become totally obsessed. You know, first denial, it's just like losing a loved one. You go into denial, then you start going into great pain, then you get very obsessed about it, and you start pestering everybody around you. And they will go, oh my God, take this person away. I'm sure all of you have experienced this. Not the way to do it. You have to deal with the one in the mirror. Deal with it show that you can deal with these things. You can carry it on your shoulders without spreading this black thing around you. The thing is, expose it and then do it with light. Do it with love. Don't talk to people that are not interested. I don't talk about these things normally at all. When people approach me, I say, listen, I, if you're in for it, we're here for five, six hours. Are you up for it? If they say yes, okay, I'll devote five, six hours. And if not, fine, I don't care. It's up to each of us have our own path. We're all on our own path. We all have a, a, a level of awakening. And it's just the beauty of what's going on now. It's stunning because I've been on this road since the early 80s. It's been a very sad, very scary, very awful road and very lonely road to walk, just like I'm sure Max and, and many other people who have been on it for a long time. And now you want to listen. People all over the place are saying, tell me more, tell me more, tell me more. Unreal. It's incredible. And just because you don't see it in media and you drive around in a bus saying, oh my God, they're all asleep. No, they're not. They're just not saying it either because I can't say it to them because they're all asleep. I tell you, it's under the surface. It's just like, vroom. And if I can answer 
Now I talk a lot again. There's one video that I was going to show you, and it's called, if you go on YouTube, How a Natural Movement is Created. There's a rock concert. They've just filmed, you know, like, like there's a grassy slope where people are sitting, digging to the music, and there's this guy, crazy guy, who stands up and starts dancing. Not a good dancer. He throws off his shirt. It looks like a frog in a mixer. He, is, it's, he's, he hasn't got it. He stands up. Everybody is like, <laughs> check out that guy. Okay, he goes on, totally fearless, just way, yeah, yeah, like. After a little while, a second guy comes up, no rhythm whatsoever. First guy uh, welcomes him, totally welcome. These two guys go for it. Oh, check out the nerds, you know, tinfoil hats like that. Then a third guy comes up, then a fourth, fifth, six, seven, eight, nine, and suddenly it just takes off. So within a minute or two, the whole thing is rocking. It just goes woof. So the thing is, we think, oh my God, this elite, they're so powerful. No, they're not. We are powerful. When we see, it's not only in numbers, it's just when we take back our strength, my God, they can. If they say, go to war, no, that's it. That's what you have to do. No, I'm not doing it. Henry, you put on your boxer shorts, put on some gloves, have some balls for once, you go. Dear Mr. Bush, you go. No, 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 these people are extreme cowards. They never do it themselves. They send us. And that's the tragic thing, that people enlist in uniforms, thinking that they're doing it for peace and democracy, not understanding when they go to totally innocent countries that they're going to liberate, that the local population throw rocks at them. It's so strange. Why don't I see a priest when I try to rape them and knock their heads in and arrest their kids? I don't understand it. Why am I here? You are here because you are being used, duped, duped, duped. Oh, I can go on for hours. Anyone else? Just talk like this. Mercenaries are legal soldiers, uh, paid soldiers. And when you look at these today, you say, oh, the US and I is in Iraq and they've lost so and so many people. You have to understand that half of the numbers that you, or the numbers that you are being presented are half the army, because half of the army the, in the American army are contractors, private contractors, that do awful stuff, get plenty paid and so on. All in the name of breed, but not their own. Okay, so I'm quite impressed by your work. Um, I wondered, could you maybe explain a bit about how you uh, do your investigations? For instance, uh, how, how could you know that some of these people from Operation 40 were in Stockholm on the day of Olaf Palmer's uh, murder? Is, is this something that you can talk a bit about? Yeah, my middle name is Stubborn Son of a Bitch. It's when I started out, when, when I heard that the, the, I, have, I first got into the JFK assassination, Robert Kennedy, all of these things, early 1980s. And then in 86, the Swedish prime minister was gunned down in the street. I thought, I live in a perfect Swedish country, you know, I can trust the police, it's a democracy, everybody's honest, there's no corruption whatsoever. So thank God, within a month or two, they will take him. Of course, lone crazy guy. I mean, pff, they will deal with it. And then I started noticing these very odd things that follow the same template that I've seen in the other assassination. Unfortunately, we didn't get to that because I speak so much. And so when I saw that, I thought, whoa, whoa, whoa. Something very odd is going on in the country of Sweden. So I moved to Sweden. I, no, I moved to Stockholm. I left my job. I went there, started working as a bus driver and uh, cleaning toilets, these type of things, just to totally devote myself on finding out what happened. Because I knew very early on that the story we're being fed is an absolute lie. Many of these so-called mysteries are no-brainers. Robert Kennedy, Sirhan Sirhan comes with a, a revolver with eight bullets. 
13 bullets are fired. Okay, mastermind, could there be a second shooter? I asked the Lord about, yeah, okay, Sirhan Sirhan was standing in the front shooting like this. As soon as he started shooting, they wrestled him down on the steam table, took the gun away from him, okay? So, of course, I have no idea why this happened, but anyway, so of course, uh, Robert Kennedy was shot three times straight from the front. No, he was shot three times straight from behind and to the right. So my nine-year-old daughter would go like, but dad, who is standing behind him to the right? Good question. And we in this room are still asking, who shot him? It, was it Sirhan, Sirhan or not? Was it Lee Harvey Oswald or not? Was it Christa Pettersson or not? The answer is no, it was not. How thick are we? Just look at the de Pentagon. One plane, whoop, disappears into a hole the size of a missile. Okay, the official story that most of us are buying to this very day, the plane vaporized. Because of the extreme heat, it, it vaporized. You're laughing. This is the story. I come home, I lost the car. I'm sorry, darling. Where's the car? I, I reversed into the wall and it vaporized because of the friction. <laughs> Do you write to the insurance company and say, my car vaporized, can you please give me a new one? What would, you, they, what would they say? What does that say about us? We're laughing, but I'm not joking. Any more questions? Yes, there is one here. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for the presentation. My absolute pleasure. Um, I wanted to ask you if you could talk more about uh, the people like you always n people name them them like who controls us is it the layers of them okay who, who could like yeah could you okay. talk about them more? in the world as far as i've been able to find out 30 years is that there is a global power pyramid okay in this power pyramid, it's totally compartmentalized, meaning it's chopped up in little pieces so that no one inside the power pyramid knows more than their little part. Then on the top of this pyramid, that is where they are the ones doing the control and, and the direction, what is being carried out. And these, these, uh, so many of these groups and corporations and banks and, and uh, secret uh, police forces and so on are divided down here, con connected up here. That's why, was it the Mossad, was it the CIA? Yes. Was it the, the MI6? Yes. It's not di divided in the top. They use each other, just different coins. Was the mob involved? Yeah, they were in most of these things because it's just different sides of the same coin. I go up to a level where it's not the top of the pyramid. I leave that to other researchers that are more dedicated to find out that part. Because this is a, such a massive area that your head will just explode from, I, I mean, you need to focus on one part. Like Nils Herit is focused 9-11. I'm focused on mostly assassins and how it's connected, how these things are connected. That's my little part. And uh, oh, I wouldn't call it little. That's the one I've, I've uh, dis devoted myself to find out. But I go up to a, a, a level where the Bilderberger Group, the Commission of 300, the Council on Foreign Relations, and the Trilateral Commission, the Skull and Bones, that level. There are a lot higher levels. I do not know. I leave that to other researchers, but that's up to where I go. And these people are people you see on TV every day. In my book, Coup d'etat in Slow Motion, where, which you can find on lightonconspiracies.com, uh, the, it's about the killing of the Swedish Prime Minister, Olaf Palme. I'm, point, I'm naming all the people involved, names, uh, photos, how the, ho the whole thing was carried out, letters from the killer himself, who drove the escape cars, where they did everything, the whole involvement, how infiltrated it is with the uh, international arms trading, pedophile gangs, Iran Contras, the JFK assassination, and the sinking of Estonia, it is all connected. This book is, is almost a thousand pages, not because I like writing, because I do not, but because it's very complicated. And the last 200 pages are just membership list of the Bilderberg Group, the members, the location of their secret meetings, and the agenda that has leaked out. 
when you compare these agenda you will and you compare with world history you will see that it follows each other very like this and this is the reason why i was part i was invited by charlotte charlotte to come and speak outside the bilderberg meeting uh, here because this group needs to be exposed very nice people up front they look great on tv my god the agenda it's so dark they are also compartmentalized they do not know the whole thing so you have to all the time understand not judge them just make it stop by exposing it put the spotlight spot on them saying we see you uh, unfortunately we don't have enough time left for today so maybe we could save some of the questions for the debate that is going to happen tomorrow so we would like to can I finish? Oh, oh I'm with sorry. No, no, just, <laughs> I, d I didn't mean to be rude. Can I finish with a little prayer? If you wouldn't mind joining me. Like I said, I am not a religious person, but I am a spiritual being like all of us are. And there's this beautiful, beautiful uh, prayer that uh, my yoga teacher normally uses. And it goes like this. May the entire universe be filled with peace and joy, love and light. May everyone, and especially the ones who hurt us, be filled with peace and joy, love and light. Victory to that light. It's not a matter of hitting them, hurting them, whatever. They need to heal. They are in shark waters. They're surrounded by each other. Awful people, awful greed, awful black holes inside. I do not envy their position, especially now when the light is turned on to them. They fear us. And I would say to them, do not fear us. Have some balls, step forward, become whistleblowers in transparency. Show what you have been part of. Show it so that we can start understanding what has been going on. The more courageous and open you come to us, I speak directly to them now, the more we will welcome. The ship is going down. In my opinion, the next Bilderberg meeting is 2015. They say, I say it's not. It's not going to happen. Because before then, we're turning this world into this beautiful, beautiful place it's supposed to be. And then it's up to us to see, can we really handle that responsibility? That's the next one. But first, the house is on fire. We need to let get the fire fixed then we can start focusing on see can we handle this can we be brothers and sisters can we we who cannot even uh, be what do you call it who, who cannot even agree on what type of pizza we should order if we ate people you know can we solve this can we turn this world into the thing it's supposed to be and now i will be quiet Oh, der Dame gehabt. Ja.